a slight delay there. And today, um, so welcome to Integration Monday, and hopefully everybody's enjoying the series so far. Today we've got Steve Jan Wiggers, who's joining us from uh, Holland, and Steve's going to be talking about BizTalk extensibility and some of the experiences with the different ways you can you can kind of do extensibility within BizTalk. Um, just a couple of quick shout outs before I pass over to him. Um, the first is just a shout out for anybody who doesn't already know. So we've got the BizTalk Summit in London in a couple of weeks time, a few, well, just over a month now, um, 13th and 14th of April. So if you like the content that you see on Integration Monday sessions, the early bit offer is still in place on that. So, um, you know, get yourself joined up to come over to London for that conference. The um, next one is just really about engaging with each other calls. So the the first thing is um, Twitter and the, the various chats and stuff. So if anybody's got any questions, the best place to pop them is on the link that was shared on the chat earlier, where your question will obviously be saved on the website so people can look at questions later. But you can also chat in the chat window, um, which is available via the chat icon on the Join Me toolbar. So, you know, two places we can interact while the call's going on, and Steve will check both of those later for questions. Um, shout out about the website and Eventbrite for future events. So we've got a whole series of them coming up, and, um, you know, if you want to come to any of the future ones, just sign up via Eventbrite. And um, finally, just the, the list of events coming up. So next, we've got Howard who's going to join us from the United States, who's going to talk about BizTalk and HL7 Fire. And that'll be the first one of two weeks worth of content around healthcare integration. And um, hopefully that'll that'll be quite good if anybody's working in that space. But now I'm going to pass over to Steve Jan, who will tell us more about BizTalk extensibility. Screen sharing, okay. Oh. Right, do you see do you see my screen? Right, okay, let's go then. Right, sorry for the delay guys, this is something new. Alright, so we're all good now. Share screen, okay. So I'm Stephen Wiggers, Microsoft Integration Consultant, working for a company called Dutchworks that's situated in the Netherlands. Um, doing all kinds of stuff around .NET, uh, SharePoint, webs, and integration. I'm a TechNet Wiki author, um, blogger, do forums. I'm a, a runner, so I ran a few um, half marathons. Did a full one in Berlin together with Kent, so that was about two years ago. Probably could do one more. And I'm also really into um, American football, so I'm one of the you know Dutch 12 men, if you say. So I've been to a couple of uh, games in the last couple of years, some of my MVP friends in um, in the States. So hence that picture here. So really good sports. Didn't win uh, this time Seattle Seahawks. They lost to the, the New England pra uh, Patriots. So that was a kind of a shame though. But uh, anyways, um, Michael has already done a shout out at this Bistock Summit. So if you haven't registered yet, then um, please do so. That's, uh, it's, in the, it's in April, the mid of April. So if you're available and able to go, so please do there will be tons of stuff you've heard before microservices api management and more some of the uh, the bistock stuff all right so why this talk right so done this uh, discussion with a few people and also this came to to bear last year something um shared by uh, some of our uh, competitors so in this case it was MuleSoft, and also a bit you know bragging a bit why you should away from walk away from this talk so well this was not, not going to be a comparison session or whatsoever but did, what did catch my attention a bit was like you know extensibility and something so this gave me kind of a hint like you know we're not expensive extensible i know what do you mean we're not flexible and extensible this of course we are some mature products been out there for more than 10 years you know you've got a fast community some of you who joined who were in this space for years so hey you know there's tons of things you can do so that's why i think you know i should do this talk and you know create a little bit more awareness you know about the different extensibility capabilities that um you know, are available within the platform and, and in demonstrating and showing you the power of uh, of dotnet and and basically 
you can see that Bistro could handle a lot of uh, complexity. It could deal with a lot of complexity. It's, it's a great tool. It's, you know, with that .NET, you extend, you got great uh, stuff within extensibility. So it's there. It's available. You've been working with it for years, and I'm probably uh, of your customizations yourself as well. And I'm also going to walk through some of the configurations as well. Okay, so extensibility. So what does it really mean? Well, in my view, it's a bit like, okay, flexing your hands, right? So more available, more making it more flexible and more, you know, geared towards different scenarios and situations where you can leverage the out-of-the-box um, um, features, but also use the power that the .NET framework offers you. Basically, Bistock Service built on top of this, you know, great framework. And there's, you know, different situations where you need to, to flex basically that BizTalk um, server platform. So, so that's what we're going to talk about. All right, so this is going to be an animation which you've seen before. So I'm not going to explain BizTalk, but it's more focusing on, all right, so flexibility and extensibility, where can you find it, right? So you can find it in the beginning, you know, when messages come in, in this XML, oh, you're all good. But if it isn't, then sometimes, you know, when this message goes into that pipeline, basically has to be serialized into XML. Or for instance, you have to verify a signature or you have to decrypt it. Then you end up in a situation where you have some customizations going on within your receive pipelines. Then going forward, um, you basically will have mapping. And mapping is somewhere where you can find extensibility too. Like for instance, Sandra Pereira has written an, an extensive book about uh, BizTalk maps. And you can see that there's tons of ways and possibilities within mapping using either just a mapper or exit from toys or what. So once a message leaves again, you can have customization either with mapping and port mapping or within the pipeline where you need to encrypt a message when it's being sent out of to your target system. And if you furthermore look, so based on top of the message in your orchestration where you can find customization where you might need to have some kind of configuration or you would see the error to put in place all has to do with some of the extensibility you can find. Now there's some other capabilities around BizTalk, some I'm not gonna to touch upon. So some of the accelerators, H07 will be discussed by uh, Howard and some of the extensibility on service bus you will find um, in the talk, I think, with uh, Tommaso. So I'm gonna focus in more on the messaging ladder, uh, orchestration a bit, and I'm gonna touch a bit on, on um, BIS, uh, the, the BIS activity monitoring and BRE. Right, so one of the topics, so I'm gonna delve a bit in you know, this messaging, so I'm gonna touch stuff around port, pipelines and mapping. So these are always a bit on, on the port level, which you saw in that animation. I'm going to touch about um, an orchestration where you can find some of your customization. And you have your debugging. So this is all around where you can find some of the extensibility. And I will demonstrate that too. And then I'll dive in some of the other capabilities around extensibility. So BRE and BAM. Deployment, a little bit of walking. So I have some demos around that. And operations. So those are going to be a bit of the topics I'm going to dive into regarding extensibility. So let's look at port level. At port level, you basically out of the box you have tons of adapters. So it's not very unlike it's very unlikely that you could, you know, or you would build your own adapter. In case you would, then you would of course need to have that adapter pack SDK, which has the boilerplate code basically to enable you to build your own uh, adapter. But basically, it's, it's kind of a buy versus build. So there are some community ones. So recently, the, the scheduled task adapter has been updated and ported to the latest framework technology. You can use that one. Or you can buy one, for instance, the, uh, the active adapter to integrate with Active Directory on Cameron Checkwell, and then some other, soft, uh, other software vendors that offer adapters, for instance, the end software ones. So those are the kinds of things you find on, on adapters. And then if you look at more like behavior, so you can either intercept the message within a pipeline and do some pre or post processing, or you could do that within a behavior, leveraging .NET and .CS. So it's more geared towards if you're using uh, the .CF bindings where you can apply behaviors. So for instance, if you need a kind of a token when you integrate with a SaaS application like Salesforce, then you need to kind of log in and get that token before you can do actually um, actions 
on the SAS object model of the Salesforce object model itself. So get a customer whatsoever. So, but you can also have that logic implemented in a pipeline or with even an orchestration, what I've done in the past. So going forward, um, you have pipelines. Now, you know that out of the box, you have a few pipelines uh, with the 2.14 R2. You have the latest JSON encoder and decoder, which I'm going to do a demo on. So you find a few out of the box, which gives you the ability to create kind of your, your own custom pipeline component, or pipeline itself. Now, in case those out of the box pipeline components were not suitable enough, then you have to divert to the fact that you have to build your own kind of custom pipeline component. Then you can, for instance, use the Pipeline Component Wizard to help you out and you know, easily build that um, from scratch to, to, to full-fledged Pipeline Component. And well, you would not really, there's not really much out there you could buy. There was one this archiving Pipeline Component, but it's already gone. So basically, you can build and that from scratch, or you can look on, on, online, and there are a ton of examples out there. Um, even if it, regarding security, then I've leveraged it like even Chillcat components within the pipeline components to have more um, sophisticated encryption. So let's look at let's look at a demo. And so sorry, I've got this this messaging scenario where I'm using this up to uh, two thirteen R two where I'm doing kind of protocol mediation. So I'm sending a SOAP XML message to BizTalk, which then basically sends that through as a REST request to a last FM API. So I've recently written some articles around this. And I'm getting a JSON XML back. So in this case, when I'm getting a JSON back, then I need to serialize that back into XML before I can throw the process and give that back to my um, client in this case. So here, I'm basically using a custom pipeline component, uh, pipeline with an out of the box um, JSON encoder or decoder in this case. So I'm going to switch over to my demo machine. So here's my demo, basically. And as you can see, there's this JSON decoder, right? So this is something new out of the box of 213. So when a JSON message comes in, then it gets serialized into XML. So basically, when you have your JSON, you go through a wizard, which in 213, and then it basically gets serialized into XML. So how does this really work? Just to make it more visual for you guys. So this is the last of M uh, application. So I'm putting in one of my bins. And I'm doing get info. So this is being sent to that last FM API. And then it's routed back as a JSON message. And then it gets serialized. And then ultimately, my client is basically presenting this information, which you can find on last of M, and also the top albums. So these are just JSON, or at least these are REST calls on the REST API providing me back with a JSON. So that was kind of an, an, ex, an example of how you can you know, support your message uh, scenario with some small extens, extension on using, in this case, the JSON, pi, uh, JSON pipeline components. OK. Let's look at mapping. So mapping is a big topic. Um, Sandro has written, what I said, a large book about it. Now, there are different ways you can approach mapping. So I've talked to a few peers, also people I know, that won't use the mapper at all. Uh, at least they will revert back to XSLT and, and use all kind of alternative tools for it. <clears throat> so there's kind of sometimes a discussion on going on, should I just use the mapper and it's functoid, or no, just use XSLT through a script functoid. So, that's quite an interesting discussion, I would say. And the other factor is you can build your know, user mapper, and then in case you want to consolidate some of the functionality, so you have large, extensive uh, amount of, of functoids on your map, and you could, if that's getting you know, in the way, making it you know, complex to read and follow and to maintain, then you can choose or opt for to consolidate that functionality into a custom functoid. The other extensibility you find in mapping is the script from Toy itself. So you can enhance mapping capabilities by using some kind of inline code, or you just call an external assembly, which has code, for instance, to apply from uh, date formats, for instance. Just an example, something I built recently to cater for all kinds of date formats because subsystems like SAP and Siebel treat dates differently. So you can consolidate that kind of logic within um, 
because in an, in an assembly to which you reference uh, externally and call within the script for instance, mind that it's always string in, string out when it exploits. And then you have an orchestration where you can apply code within an expression shape. So you can call another orchestration if you want, or you can call a BRE, uh, you can policies. There's tons of stuff you can do. But also, <clears throat> you can use it to enhance your um, logging capabilities or um, error handling. And it has some limitations, so it's not actually real C sharp code you put in that expression shape. And then on the other hand, you can support your process basically with helper classes that enable you to do configuration to get, for instance, uh, key value pairs out of an SSO database. So you can use that through helper classes, or you can manipulate messages in case you need to. So those can all be done um, through helper classes within your, um, within your project, basically. What I do sometimes see is that if people are very, very well versed in .NET, but less in, in orchestration, they sometimes tend to to call external, uh, you know, to call these classes through expression shape, and then you find all the logic within code and not in the orchestration. And that is, of course, not the, the way you should use your helper classes. Now let's touch on debugging before I move to another demo. So you can have debugging on various levels, depending on you want to do it in runtime or in design time. So let's say if you do you create a kind of an adapter or a behavior, then you would have to, to look more. You have to write a kind of a client to talk with your adapter or see how your behavior works. In case when you have a pipeline, you can either use Visual Studio with the test capabilities in there, or you can use tools like pipeline.exe. So you can test it kind of a design or runtime. I'm going to show a runtime in a minute. You can have mapping, so you can do the you know, design time using the test map and stuff, or you can do it in runtime if you want. And then going forward to an orchestration, you can either use an orchestration debugger, but when it gets more complex, you might have to refer to, let's say, debug view and use kind of a debug statement to see how our um, orchestration is. Right, so I'm gonna show a little bit about you know debugging stuff. So in this case, it will be a kind of a pipeline component. So I've created a custom pipeline component that switches from basically changes the namespaces going forward from one to the other. And I'm using, in this case, some of the optimization within the pipeline. So I'm using the stream virtual stream class. So again, I will move to my demo machine and I'm going to a different project. So let's move to the streaming one. So this is kind of my streaming <coughs> pipeline component leads to, to basically change namespaces from one to the other and I'm using some of the debug statements. So here I got my debug view, and let's open also a folder. So just so you quickly have a look. So when I put a message in here, let me just go to the correct project. So here I just got a message, I put it in the folder and then quickly I'm getting a result back in that debug view. So this is quick and easy how you can show or debug basically your pipeline component in this case. But let's say you've got a project with multiple orchestration calling each other, then it can be quite hard to do that. Or if not, it's not possible really with an orchestration debug. And then, for instance, you could use uh, you know debug statements, for instance. I'll show a different way later on, um, another way how you could basically do this with instrumentation of your code. Okay, so this is another way of how you could, or this is the way, for instance, you could debug some of your stuff within this talk. And it's kind of a nice extensibility. The ABQ has been out there for quite a long time. It's from Sys Internals, so it's really good stuff. Right, let's look at, for instance, Vista's rules engine. So where does extensibility fit in in that way? So in case you need you know, you got fact retrieves in the case you build, have to build your own kind of custom fact retriever, then you can do so leveraging the, uh, the .NET framework. So there are some examples and ways to do that as well. Now, the other thing is you can also call a rules engine from .NET leveraging this, basically the rules engine without using BizTalk itself. So in that case, you just call the rules engine within a .NET application. Or you could call uh, your rules, uh, your rules, uh, either for call policy shape, but that's normal, or you could use 
an expression shape where you can basically have a little bit more control over the policy you call, because for a call rule shape, you always get the latest version. BAM, and this is a very nice one, offers basic kind of an API. So, you, can, you know, for instance, when you have to build your kind of your own custom interceptor or when you want to write some of the streams uh, through a pipeline or other ways. So I know uh, Rene Brau has in the past written something around that BAM as well, BAM API. So that's kind of an assembly you leverage to use BAM within even uh, the Microsoft Azure BizTalk services. So that was quite neat. Well, I'm going to show a little bit differently, so how you could use this BAM API, because you can use it either through an orchestration pipeline where you can collect streams, or, for instance, in, in, in .CF workflows, or serv uh, uh, .CF services, or within an application itself. So this is kind of the BAM API. So I'll switch back to my machine again. And this will be um, just a quick demo. So this is kind of the BAM API you can find in the, uh, the SDK. So that's the SDK folder you can find when you install BizTalk. And basically you can call, you, so you create kind of an activity, you deploy it in the BAM primary import database, and then you can leverage and use this. So, so when you run this, so this is kind of a simulation program. So you run this and then it will create all kinds of orders and stuff. So, and it will put this in the database. So you can collect all this stuff. So basically one hand, so I ran this already a couple of times. So you can see some of the data here or you can even have a look at more the actual data going back and forth. So if you don't close this, this will keep running forever. So I'll get back to this demo again in a second. This is a quick way to show that you know the, the BAM API can be used quite extensively in different scenarios. Let's look at the deployment. There's another part of where you can find a good extensibility. So you can either create kind of your own um, deployment script, leveraging, for instance, uh, the BATS task or MS build, although that could be quite consuming. Then again, this is not what I see a lot. So I already see some yays and, and hoorays for the BISTOC deployment framework, because I've, I've seen it in, in quite a few projects already the last couple of years. And this seems to be kind of the defective standard, because, you know, out of the box, MSZ deployment from BizTalk doesn't really work. It's pretty rigid and not flexible at all. And if you're looking more to a flexible framework, complete and customizable, then this BizTalk deployment frame is basically something you can need. So that's kind of another really neat extension on top of BizTalk. Another way you, you can look at deployment is using PowerShell, which also gives you a little bit more control, flexibility, and, and ways of automation. But then again, this is also very time consuming, although I do see some people favoring that model too. Right, let's get the logging. So this is quite interesting. So there's some nice things around this too. So not the log for net one. So this is kind of an old way and classic way of, of using logging and not that extensively used anymore. You got the enterprise memory, which you can leverage from the Microsoft building blocks. So you can use one of the building blocks for logging as well, or you can use the enterprise tracing for Windows, which gives you better performance and some of the things, and I think the way basically to go. So I have some demos around this in a second. The thing I like to touch on a bit is the operations part. So there are some BISTOC assemblies uh, out there, like the BISTOC operations, for instance, which you can use. And I showed it that a minute as well, how you can leverage and use those in case you want to roll your own kind of monitoring operation solution. But then again, also here you'll find something more like uh, buy versus build. So there's some monitoring tool out there. So I'm going to plug again one of the organizers of this is like, you know, BISTOC 360, which basically is an extension on the Microsoft, of on the BISTOC platform that gives you tons of capabilities. Uh, there's a throttling analyzer. Of course, there's monitoring and all kinds of stuff in there. So yeah, here you find something like buy versus build, but there are capabilities in there that you can use for, you know, rolling your own solution in case you want to. Okay, so let's look at an, uh, another example. So again, I got this REST uh, kind of thing again, kind of a mediator. So I'm sending in uh, basically a request for getting the status of an American airport. So this is the uh, government agency that uh, gives an REST API. REST, like you can only use GET, but you can get basically the status of an airport. And that will give me kind of a JSON message back too. And what I like to do here is that I've got a custom archiving component that will basically catch the JSON, but also the XML. Uh, that's one end, and another end is using ETW. So let me just walk through that solution. 
and then also getting back to my API solution as well. But let's look at the, um, the CAT framework. So I think most of you are familiar with the ETW, and you know, this is the back uh, BISTOP CAT instrumentation frame. So there's another extension built in the past by the um, BISTOP CAT team. The CAT team. And they created this together with um, the CAT instrumentation framework version 1.04. It's a bit outdated, so you need to download it, build it, and then. So let's use it in first for my um, sample of the airport status. So within my pipeline component, I've put some code there as well, which you can leverage and use to basically track or log your stuff with, in this case, your components. So you can do some tracing or logging within there. Instead of using those debug statements, you're using like the trace manager, etc. So this Python component will be used twice in a custom Python I created. So you're already seeing the JSON decoder before, but I'm using the stream archive twice, once to catch the JSON and the other one to catch the XML. What I'm also going to be doing while we're talking is I'm going to set up the cat information as well. So I'm tracing what's going through that pipeline component. So I'll start the trace and open this up, and then I'll go to my client. Okay, so let's get this all back up again. And the kit train work. Let's get rid of this. So I'm going to call, let's say, I want to know the status of an airport. At F, let's, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Seattle, Tacoma. So this is going to be sent. So that basically that REST API is going to be given an airport code. That's all in the get method. And then I'm getting basically JSON back that's serialized back in XML. And that will be displayed here. So this will take a little bit. Well, so the the information. So this is all uh, written using that code you just. Here you see that the extension is JSON, and then it will go to the pipeline again, and that will be saved as XML. I stop the trace, and then I can also open this in a text editor. So in this case, I'm using Notepad plus plus. So again, you see the output. You can also see in DBQ. Correct. So, and if I go to the map itself, and I mean the folder, so I've got the airport solution. So this is the JSON. So this is how. Here, as you can see, this is the JSON. Then I got another one where I catch the XML endpoint, and this is where the XML is. So you basically can also see what happens before and after that um, decoder, basically. The other thing, and this is a bit of an operational kind of thing. So, you know, when I get this message ID, let's say you kind of kind of your own monitoring or endpoint monitoring solution, and you have this message ID, then for instance, you can paste it in here and then you can get also the message. Now, let me just show you that piece of code. So this is something about leveraging the .NET, uh, the, the BizTalk, um, sorry, the, the BizTalk assemblies you could use. So let me just quickly find that code for you guys. So yeah, this is the part I would like to show you. So this is the BizTalk operation. So, and that's just uh, referencing the BizTalk operations assembly. A really fast way of you know getting that message out of the tracking database and show that. So that's something I quickly wanted to uh, to share as well. So how you can leverage the BizTalk operations from an extensibility uh, point of view, where you can use the capabilities in that assembly. Now going back to this cat controller. So you know you just saw me do this BAM API thing. So I just referred to to, to that one, and let's have a look at that one too. So this is the BAM. So again, if I go to that solution, 
you can find that I've also put some of that, you know, code for the ETW as well. So you can find something around down the lines here. So you can also trace the scope and see how long certain calls lasted. So if I start this application again, oh, hang on, before I do that, I'm going to start that trace. Clear this up. And I'll show you again in a second. So I'm going to run this. So it's running. And let's have a look at these. So as you can see, this is running as well. And it keeps running. And then I'm just going to stop this. And you can see the trace outputs here. Stop the trace here and open it up. No. Nope. And then you can see, and that's quite interesting, some of how long certain calls last. So you can also have some measurements in there, leveraging the API and the BAM API and see what the durations of certain things are. This is quite neat. So this can all be done using that AT, ATW. So this is kind of a, a demo around um, the extensibility, a little bit on, on logging, tracing, um, and operations. So let's look a bit about you know, overall considerations when you look at extensibility. So in certain ways, you have to deal with, you know, are you going to buy or an off-the-shelf product, let's say an adapter, or are you going to build it yourself? And in case, for instance, you have pipeline components you want to build, then, of course, you can use that pipeline component wizard. But you can also reach online. So you don't always have to um, yeah, go and, and invent, reinvent the wheel, because there are tons of stuff out there. There's a, a nice article on Technet Wiki listing all the custom components out there. There's an SDK folder where you can find, in, you know, where you can find tons of information. So you don't always have to, to reinvent the wheel, basically. Now, another thing you can, you know, think about is instrumentation. So you can look at, you know, catering your code for logging, tracing, uh, do some kind of the stuff you, um, you know, could use for error handling and stuff. So, yeah, so instrumentation is a pretty big part. And, you know, I think this ETW is really interesting and, and the way forward. I've used it a few times in the past. I did see it was outdated, outdated a bit, the code, but you can still port that to... 4.5 and use it. You know, you've just seen it. It's, it works perfectly. So it's it's awesome. I really like that one. And also use you know use the community as in a sense and look at the online resource and we'll share some of the resources later on and some of the free tools that are out there. So going to free tools and what's out there. So you have the NOS add-in. I think it's still downloadable, available. I think it will be commercialized into. I but before that, it's really really neat to do. For productivity, you can also use it quite well. For instance, to test a pipeline, something Nino always vividly demonstrates. You can do like it's that easy. But yeah, it's 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 something you can really use. Another one already mentioned is the, the pipeline component wizard. Um, you can look at the benchmark wizard. It's been created by Michael uh, Harkinson. And it's still used. We're using it now for our migration going forward from 2.13 to 2.13 R2. Although it's still targeted 2010, you can still, for instance, use that. Another good extensibility, for instance, something you quite use is the Vista Documenter to document your basically your artifacts you've just seen. And um, another thing, like you know, my uh, Jean-Paul Smith, you know, my fellow countryman has created this great Vista software factory where you can basically set the, you know set out. Uh, a way of, of building your solution and stuff. So, like, you have, you know, a similar solution set up, framework set up for you, and you build from that, so you have some similarity in all your solutions. So, something you can use as well. And, of course, there are probably tons of others. So, I'll just look in the, uh, the, the discussion later on if you feel that I've forgotten a few things or forgot to mention it. So, uh, but it's something you can use. So, what I like to run up. So, this is not a picture of me, but this is more like, you know, this, this framework, or at least this extensibility, is, is really applicable for this document. You know, extensible, flexible, it's strong, it's powerful. I just, what I did is scratch the surface of tons of stuff you can do with, with this talk today and using all the stuff that's out there. So what's out there is the TechNet Wiki, which contains tons of stuff. I've written a few articles. There are some other people that have done stuff. There are, of course, blogs. So you know when you get through this when you get this um, presentation you can click some of the links I've consolidated that all 
you have a list of books. You have the Amsterdam Code Gallery, which gives you a good impression of what's out there. And, and, and ex especially if you look at extensibility, you've got the BISTOC sample SDK. What I mean by that is that folder where you, you find when you install. So basically you have tons of examples there. Even that BAM API I showed you is there. You get a BISTOC 2010 training kit. So that's still available. It's 2010, but you can still find some stuff there. Super gallery. You find some stuff there, and you got also plural sites. For instance, Daniel Toomey, I think he's on the call well uh, there too. He's creating some great um, uh, course around using functoids within mapping. So, so I just conclude there's a ton of material out there. Right. So here's my contact details in case later on you want to um, to yeah. Contact me. Um, you know, uh, I know tons of people who are on this call, so because I've been to some of the outskirts of this planet, so I know some of the friends from Australia as well. So it's pretty cool. I hope to come again sometime. Uh, my user page. So, um, so yeah, I know it's for some people. It's still in the morning, so you might be off to work or you're ready to go to work. Some maybe around lunchtime are, are close to going off to bed. So I'm one of those, and you know, be fresh and ready for tomorrow again. So. You know, I wish you all uh, a, a great day, and um, yeah, let's see if there's some Q&A. So I'll just switch to <clears throat> the discussion board. Let me just see what's on there. So one comment. So that's not much, so not too much questions. Anyone questions or? I know it's pretty straightforward. I do like, you know, if you got some feedback, of, please do share. Um, maybe I should create maybe a little bit more extensibility in kind of a paperwork to wrap it up and get a bit more in depth or other ways. So yeah, please um, let me know um, if you feel this is, you know, still useful in this day and age. You know, I just thought about this uh, this this kind of talk to do and really enjoyed it. You know, finding some of the stuff I've used in the past, and I hope you like. Some of the demos too about the ETW. So yeah, I, I, I did see a few people that wanted the code. So yeah, the codes. Yeah, simply definitely gonna share that. So I think uh, some of the stuff um, I written in the part. Um, yeah, they're online. So I'll, I'll share that stuff with. Um, yeah, the, the last FM. That's something. Yeah, that's something I haven't shared. So yeah, definitely gonna put that. So I written already an article around it, but not from an extensibility perspective. Yeah, so. And there's another question, one or more tools that you use each product that you're on. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are some other tools, but those are like NetMonitor, Wireshark, um, code coverage. So when you see if you touch everyone, so those kind of things I'm using. Um, so yeah, those are some of the, the tools I use. Um, yeah, you're going to update that cookbook. Yeah, that's still something you know, I think about if I'm going to do that, although yeah, writing books. It's it's more about courses, I think, these days. So I know some of my fellow MVPs are doing courses, and I haven't seen anyone written the book yet. But I might. I haven't I haven't thought about it yet. So okay. So that's one of the um, yellow questions. So best sources for getting started with unit testing. Ah, so there's another one. Yeah, this unit. So yeah, that's something I, I also written something in my book in the past. So it's definitely something you could use as well. So um, a mapping framework uh, I've used in the past, Specflow. All right, yeah, that's another. I haven't touched that one though, Mike. So, <clears throat> but that's another thing. Yeah, I think it's got to do with behavioral testing, right? Specflow. So I you know it's used in another. Or at least I've seen it in other contexts as well. So, and that's also something that Michael created last. It's about castle, something you can do within pipelines, but you probably have to read his blog. Very good. So that's another thing about extensibility altogether. Right, let me just see what's in the chat. This unit, yeah, okay. Yeah, well share the code. Yeah, a little bit about the BISTOP documenter. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, I think it still works, but uh, I'll have to find that one out. Have I talked about Winterdawn? Yeah, something yet? I've written that in my book. So that's basically how you, the ways you can test, I think if, if that's what you mean, to test your pipeline components. So yeah, I've written something down in my Bistock cookbook as well. Uh, 
Okay. Let me see another deployment framework the image should right now. Yeah, plus ones. Okay, well. Yeah, I think that's about it. So um, if no other questions are there or comments, you can chill free uh, shadow. We still have a couple of minutes before it's um, it's 9.30 in, uh, in my country. So if not, then I hope you all could understand it. Sorry about those beginning kind of, you know, problems. Oh, there it is. So if you why I went to aspect. Okay. Yeah, so it's the beginning, but, um, you know, it's all done. So it's good. So. Yeah, well, um, in that case, um, I'd like to thank you all as well, as well for, for attending and, and, you know, listen to my talk. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'll, probably some of you I will see, you know, in a couple of weeks or so when we're going to the UK. So, okay, well, um, yeah, I can keep talking for later for the next couple of minutes. I'm all excited now. It all works fine. But, um, okay, well, if not, then... Thank you.